House Republicans defy Donald Trump on a secret ballot to choose their nominee for the next Speaker of the House, but the chamber is still completely paralyzed as Republicans scramble to get the votes together in a process that has been both very chaotic and very weird. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As we have said many times on this show, Donald Trump weirdified the Republican Party. They were always weird, but for the most part, they had enough shame to keep their weirdness hidden. But then Trump came along and unleashed an army of mutant freaks like Mike Lindell or Rudy Giuliani, seen here attempting to hypnotize you into forgetting that he is wearing a pair of child's khakis as his golf shorts. You're getting very sleepy. No, wait, that's me. I'm getting very sleepy. Must have been my breakfast whiskey. It doesn't make the Cheerios soggy like milk does. There was no reason to show you that video today. None at all. But it's the best. So why not? There was a point. Oh, yeah, Donald Trump is weird. For example, he's a big fan of Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, who Trump recently endorsed for Speaker of the House. In the past, Trump has praised Jordan for the weirdest reasons. For example, Jordan rarely wears a suit jacket, and Trump noticed that and took away the weirdest possible interpretation. When I first got to know Jim, I said, uh, huh, he never wears a jacket. What the hell's going on? He's obviously very proud of his body. Yeah. Well, I guess we know how Trump feels about his body if his... Jackets were any bigger, they would technically be cocoons. <laughs> and again, I know everybody stopped caring about hypocrisy years ago, but just imagine how conservatives would react if Joe Biden was out on the stump talking about the body positivity of the men in the Democratic Party. I'll tell you, our caucus right now is just one gosling after the other. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, Trump endorsed Jim Jordan to be the next Speaker of the House. Jordan ran against Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise for the GOP nomination. And the conference voted on Wednesday in a secret ballot. In fact, the ballot was so secret, they made everyone put their phones in manila envelopes before entering the room. Unfortunately, Republicans accidentally put stamps on all those envelopes, and their phones got mailed to the FBI. Boss, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but we just cracked the case. Which one? Uh, all of them. <laughs> so Trump endorsed Jim Jordan, and Trump proudly touts his control over the Republican Party, claiming the people he endorses always win. So Jordan must have cruised to victory, right? Back me up, clip. We have breaking news. House Republicans have nominated Steve Scalise moments ago as their new speaker. Trump endorsed uh, Jordan, uh, you know, more than a, 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 maybe about a week ago. So a big loss for Trump here as well. Ooh, Trump's not going to be happy about that. Steve Scalise is a loser and nobody. And on top of that, he wears a jacket. <laughs> Unlike Jim Jordan, who has a terrific body. You know, I always thought members of Congress should dress like Chippendale dancers. Chippendales. <laughs> We love Chip and Dale's, don't we? You know, I, for a long time, I thought it was Chip and Dale. <laughs> and I was very surprised that bachelorettes wanted to go to a place where chipmunks would give them lap dances, because <laughs> they may look cute, but they're filthy animals. They're filthy. <laughs> you don't want them near your lap. They're just rats with nicer coats. <laughs> so, uh, Steve Scalise is now technically the GOP's nominee for speaker, but that doesn't mean he has enough votes to actually become speaker. Once the full house uh, goes to the floor to vote, he has to keep making promises to be able to get their votes, just like now former Speaker Kevin McCarthy did. The situation has been so chaotic, reporters are just grabbing members of Congress in the halls at random, live on camera, to ask them who they're voting for. As we watch one of the defectors walk by now, one of the people who ousted um, Kevin McCarthy, Tim Burchett. Mr. Burchett, you want to vote for Mr. Scalise on the floor? Absolutely. Thank you, Congressman. He's on board Steve Scalise. There's some news just now. He is going to be on the Scalise board, uh, the Scalise train. But there are others at this moment who have yet to commit. That's how much of a mess Republicans have made of this situation. They've turned professional reporters into guys handing out flyers for comedy shows in Times Square. <laughs> hey, you want to uh, come see some comedy? It's free. By the way, what kind of crampy comic would need to hand out flyers for a show in Times Square? Ah, oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> so the GOP infighting has been a mess. It's also been, as we mentioned before, incredibly weird. For example, Wyoming Congressman Harriet Hageman showed up to GOP Forum on Tuesday holding a lasso. Is she going to vote for a speaker or try to catch one? <laughs> That's a the job of Republican speakers. They gotta hog tie you down just to make you take it. Is this a meeting to elect a new speaker of the House or a county fair? After they choose a speaker, are they also gonna judge who has the biggest pumpkin? 
Which brings us to a segment called, We Could Have Made a Trump Joke Here. <laughs> Are they also gonna judge who has the biggest pumpkin? <laughs> and then we're just gonna let it go? <laughs> we're better than that. <laughs> We've moved on from that kind of joke. I mean, if we were gonna make a joke about the biggest pumpkin in the GOP, you know, we'd show you this picture. <laughs> now that's a photo we're never gonna retire, especially now that it's Halloween season. Imagine that thing, sitting on the porch waiting for trick-or-treaters. Wouldn't you wanna see what it would look like if Rudy was one of those paintings whose eyes followed you around the room? Well, here you go. But of course, a lasso is not the weirdest fashion choice at the GOP conference this week. As we mentioned yesterday, South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace showed up wearing a shirt with the letter A, which she said was a scarlet letter because she voted to oust former Speaker Kevin McCarthy last week and got criticized for it. I'm wearing the scarlet letter after the week that I just had last week, being a woman up here and being demonized for my vote and for my voice. Okay, but that doesn't look like the scarlet letter. That's looked like you stole the last letter of the Chick-fil-A logo. <laughs> Mace is one of the holdouts threatening to tank Scalise's speakership bid. She told CNN's Jake Tapper yesterday that she would vote for Jordan when it got to the floor. And she even claimed there were some Democrats, not Republicans, Democrats who said they could trust Jordan, one of the most pro-MAGA members of Congress who helped instigate the January 6th coup. And her claim left Tapper in stunned disbelief. Well, I think Jim Jordan is not out of the mix. I've talked to a lot of people who still support him. I've actually talked to Democrats who, who trust him at his word. I, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. Jim Jordan? I, yes, I've talked to Democrats over the last week on who do they trust, even though they wouldn't agree with him on many issues. He is someone The Jim can, Jordan from Ohio? Oh, yes, the Jim Jordan from Ohio. Democrats people, in Congress? Yes, they can work with him and those that name I Name one to. Democrat from Congress that trusts Jim Jordan. I'm not going to name people off the record. They trust him more than they trust the former speaker in my private conversations with Democrats. The worse Republicans get, the sassier Tapper gets. <laughs> the Jim Jordan from Ohio. <laughs> with the rockin' bod. <laughs> we said it yesterday and we'll say it again today. Republican Party, you just got tapped. <laughs> but regardless of who wins the speaker vote, they're both extremists. They both voted to overturn the 2020 election on January 6th, and neither will acknowledge that Joe Biden was the legitimate winner, which led Colorado Congressman Ken Buck to say he couldn't vote for either of them. I asked last night, uh, will you unequivocally and publicly state that the election, the 2020 presidential election, was not stolen. Um, he didn't answer that question very clearly, and Jim Jordan didn't answer that question very clearly. Something as simple as saying the 2020 election wasn't stolen, why don't you think either one of those gentlemen can commit to that? I, I think there is a large uh, group of Trump followers in this country that uh, would uh, disagree with that, and, and would, uh, there would be a political penalty for, for saying such a thing. Yeah, Republicans are so desperate to please the Trump base, they're doing increasingly dumb bringing like a lasso to a meeting or dressing like an off-brand Captain America, your grandma would get at the dollar store. <laughs> the man at the store said this one is just as good. You just can't eat the paint or leave it out in the sun. She was right next to Discount Wonder Woman. <laughs> but that explains everything right there. Republicans are terrified of Trump base and pro-Trump media, even though it does not represent and has never represented a majority of Americans. It hasn't even come close, but it's a big enough part of the GOP base to make Republican politicians afraid, which is why they could only vote against Trump's pick for speaker when it was a secret ballot, because they all know the truth. Trump is a dangerous, aspiring dictator who wants to dismantle American democracy and who looks like a pumpkin. All right, fine, we said it. Sue me. We had one Trump pumpkin. We've been waiting hard. You know what? We've worked hard. We've worked two weeks in a row. Yeah. I know we had five months off before that, but that's two weeks in a row. Name one other American who's done that. When they write the book on me one day, I just hope they say that Seth Meyers wasn't proud of that joke, but he is. Very proud of his body. <laughs> no jacket, baby! No jacket! <laughs> this has been a closer look.